Hey guys out there in YouTube land or however you found me today, I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography and uh, <laughs> I guess that's me. And today I'm down here at Collie Avenue in Norfolk. I'm looking to hook up with my friend Brandon with Foster Gray Photography. We'll just do a little street shooting and see if we can find any of those well-known hipsters at a roundabout. You know the ones with the beard and the glasses and the hat. Nah, not really. Today we're going to be shooting the Fuji X100F, at least I am, and I hear Brandon's brought some cameras too. And this X100S is tripped out real nicely, and I'm using the teleconversion lens, so it gives me about a 50 millimeter perspective. I'm really excited about it, and I hope you have a good time, so uh, join us. Most of the time you experience photography by yourself and without your friends, but today, as I walk along Holly Avenue, I know Brandon's right around the corner, or at least he's up here somewhere. But it doesn't keep me from stopping for a few moments to take a picture of some things that look nice and are a little bit of fun. Why not pizza is one of them right here. Hey friends out there today, you know that I'm on the lookout for my buddy Brandon. I think I see him down there. Hey, what's going on Brandon? So guys, I just want to introduce you to my buddy Brandon a little bit. Now, uh, you know I... I work mainly with wedding photography here in Hampton Roads and Virginia Beach and things like that, but Brandon works with me a lot. He's my first shooter, so whenever I have two shooters on an assignment, this is the man that I call right here, and I'm really excited. I'm, I'm very thankful for all your help there. But Brandon is multifaceted. You do more than just wedding photography. I do. Um, I do special events, uh, real estate for sale, houses throughout the Hampton Roads area, and things along those lines. Also, a little bit of street photography, which I don't want to spoil anything, but some of that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some place a little bit quieter. We can talk about our cameras and our setup, let our viewers know what we're going to do, and then hit the road shooting. I'm thinking 12 shots today, a roll of 12 shots. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Okay, let's roll. All right. So for this right here, I've decided to bring out my trusty and beloved X100S. I've got a built-in neutral density filter, as well as a sweet flash sync speed up to one one thousandth of a second at my uh, widest open aperture of f2 which is pretty cool those are a couple of things that i really like about it and today i'm actually using the 50 millimeter teleconversion lens for this so uh she looks a little bit different and uh i like that but uh yeah i would like to know a little bit about your camera so uh mine, help me out i guess mine i don't want to say old school but this is the uh, original canon 7d yeah. I was using a Rebel for a while, but because I do sports every so often, football games, soccer, things like that, I wanted something that had a higher burst mode, more frames per second. So went with the 7D after waffling back and forth between that and the 5D. Right on. But it does a great job. I love it so far. I've only had it for about two months, but it does a great job. Absolutely. And so your favorite feature, you say, is uh, the, the burst shooting burst for shooting sports? Mode. Yeah, and that's something people don't really think about a lot, isn't it? They don't realize that no. um, you're going to need, like, like my, uh, my, I've got an X-Pro1. Now, I absolutely love the X-Pro1 for wedding photography and for stills and for kids at play. Mm -hmm. But that is not a camera that's set up to shoot sports. Exactly. It's, it's just not mission-specific for sports. Now, this, what you're telling me, is when you get into, like, the 7D, you get those high bursts for frame rates, that's better for sports. It's perfect for, you know, if I want to catch a running back getting through the line or the, the quarterback in the pass. And on the Rebel, you may be at three or four frames per second. On this, you get eight, ten frames per second. So that way, when I capture a running back or I capture the, the passing play, he's catching the ball, bam, 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 bam. I don't have to worry about waiting on it to re refresh so that I can get back into it and not, there I missed a big play. Well, we're going to get moving now. Brandon, thanks for the camera info, and uh, we're going to head out over this way. What do you think? Let's do it. Brandon and I didn't really know what we would get into today when we took off on this street photography journey. All we knew is that it was going to end up with some coffee over there at the fairgrounds. The nice part about Collie Avenue down here is that it's a very historic part of Norfolk, and so there's always something fun to take a picture of. Like, for example, a movie theater booth. <laughs> the Narrow is this uh, old movie theater that's been around for a long time, and it's got a lot of history and culture here in Norfolk. In fact, uh, you can go here and see the Rocky Horror Picture st Show still played live, which is pretty cool. Um, there's not a lot happening, so we're just going to insert some photos here. I hope that you enjoy them. As you can see, there's a picture of our cameraman right there. That's my boy Robert doing an excellent job. And notice this guy with the beard coming through. He's one of those hipsters we might have been looking for earlier. I think his, his beard classifies pretty nicely. And we got him, so. There's not really a lot happening. It's the middle of a weekday down here on uh, 
Collie Avenue. So we're just getting ready to head over to the fairgrounds, which is being pictured right now. There's a lot of cool places there. And they've got this old Jeep that it was used to deliver mail. It was also in World War II, which is pretty cool. Uh, the images that you're seeing right now are straight out of the camera from the uh, X100S. And uh, just really nice images all together. Photography is best enjoyed with a friend, although usually practiced alone. So whenever you can go out with your pals and get a nice cup of joe after, uh, it, it makes for a fun and engaging time. So, cheers. All right, Brandon, you know, we've been out here today. We spent about maybe 25, 30 minutes. We've got about 12 photos each. And, um, you know, I think that we've, we've discovered that there's some different shooting styles specifically for street, you know. And so what are, what are your thoughts on street photography? How do you go about it? There's really, I don't want to say there's a method to the madness. It's just you capture what you see. You know, what you think looks good might look different to somebody else. So, you know, I got a picture of the one-way sign across the street. Somebody might think, oh, it's just a road sign, but you know, sometimes those little, just the little quirky things are cool as well, just as much as the street life, the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So my pro tip, I got a couple tips I'd give to everybody, but I guess the number one tip that I would give is to think about the composition. See, lots of times people are so used to getting your, your camera and uh, pulling out the phone and just clicking a button and thinking that a photo happens. And that's kind of like we talked about earlier, the spray and pray. You know, if you look at your cell phone, you know, you can produce nice work on a cell phone if, it, if it's composed properly, if it looks nice. But if you look through your cell phone, you may not have that many nice images because they're not composed properly. So I'd say slow down and make sure that the camera is showing what you actually want it to see. That's the number one tip. That's my pro tip. And use it wisely. What about you? Don't think too much about it. I mean, obviously, you do want to get your composition right, get your settings, your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed. Get that all right and everything, but don't think too much about making the perfect shot. Sometimes the best shots happen by accident, or you take a shot, you look at it in the LCD screen on your screen, and you say, maybe I could do this, and then that's when the light bulb goes off, let me do this. So sometimes it comes to you after the fact. But today, there's so many different voices out there right. talking about what the what photography is. Whose voice do you think they should really be listening to? Their own. They gotta, they gotta go with what they feel is right. Sure, take the other guys' YouTube or whatever videos or the, the blog posts. Take them with a grain of salt. Take them seriously, but still take them with a grain of salt and say, okay, let me use those as pointers to maybe get me on my way, maybe use them as a springboard. But ultimately, I know what I want. and. There's really no conventional way to do photography. Everyone has their own method. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong. Um, obviously, there's some basic rules to follow, you know, the rule of thirds, uh, composition, things like that. But really, just have fun with it. Don't be so set on trying to follow the rules and get it right based on what, you know, Joe Blow on YouTube says. Hey, I couldn't have put it any better myself. Listen, I've had a good time shooting with you out here today. Uh, we're going to go get some coffee now and uh, sit down and relax. But uh, I just want to say thanks for coming again. Let's say bye to the viewers, and we're going to head out of here, and we're going to cue that funky music. Let's get that snaps. We're down here in, in the hipster bar. we got to get those snaps going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm Robert Hand with RobertHandPhotography.com. You can find Brandon over at FosterGrayPhotography.com. And we have been your host today. We'll catch you on the flip side. And as always, keep shooting, my friends. Damn it. Pizza smells good. What do you think? I'm going to have a little, a little slice today. I'm thinking some sausage, huh? How about you? Pepperoni, guy. Pepperoni, man. You can't ever go wrong with bacon. I love bacon. My last name's Ham. There you go. <laughs> I don't have a nice foodie last name. My last name's a color, so. <laughs> <laughs> No, that'd be weird. <laughs> Even for history.